This is the familiar look of the Southeast's land. Climate and soil are its two distinctive features, the subtropic to temperate climate and the potentially productive soil. The Southeast is also a place of large natural river systems, the highest mountains east of the Rockies, rolling hill country, bluegrass country, and even rock plateaus. But geographically, the region's chief distinction is its warm climate and abundant rainfall, and its growing season, longer on the average than any comparable area in the United States. The southeastern region is one of the six major regions into which we may divide the United States. Politically, it is marked off into 11 separate states, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, Louisiana, and Arkansas. It was in the Southeast that the first permanent English colony was established at Jamestown, Virginia in 1607. It was to the Southeast that the first Negro slaves were brought a few years later. Many Northern colonists moved into this region as land grew scarce at home. White settlement was accompanied by a steady flow of slave ships to the southeastern ports. Gradually, a plantation system developed. New lands were cleared for tobacco. Cotton spread across the south. Cane prospered in the delta, and land northwards was planted in corn. This produce was shipped to market by flatboat and later by steamboat. Cotton had become king. But by 1860, the basically wasteful one-crop system could not compete with the growing industry of the rest of the nation. The economic and political conflict could not be settled except by war. For the Southeast, a whole way of life suddenly changed. Along with much that changed, much remains. The landmarks are still there. Washington's Mount Vernon, Jefferson's home at Monticello, the monuments to Lee, great general and educator. Today, an expanded and mechanized agriculture is still the greatest single occupation of the southeastern people. About one-third of the total population live by farming. An equal number outside the cities who do not farm are classified as rural non-farm. There are four major farming sub-regions, the subtropical fruit belt, the truck farming belt, the mixed farming belt to the north, and the great central cotton belt. The subtropical fruit belt includes the huge citrus groves of Florida, Mississippi, and Louisiana, and the cane and rice fields of the deep south. From the truck farming belt along the entire coast, vegetables are now shipped to local markets and to markets in colder regions. On the uplands of the mixed farming belt grow corn, small grains, peaches, apples, and other fruits that have long characterized the southern Appalachian area. Here, too, cattle are raised. The cotton belt, however, is still the most extensive sub-region. Although the South no longer depends on this cash crop, it is important as a source of cotton cloth and cotton seed products. In addition to the plantings of cotton, winter wheat, and corn are the tobacco crops. This leading southeastern cash crop has been a major product for more than three centuries. But the grip of cotton and tobacco economy has been loosened throughout much of the southeast, as seen in the strong trend toward livestock, dairying, and poultry raising. Another major trend has been the decrease in the number of tenant farmers and a corresponding increase in the size of the average farm. In many parts of the region, the soil is impoverished. Erosion and excessive rainfall have taken a heavy toll. But crop rotation, soil building crops, and enormous quantities of fertilizer 
have helped restore the soil's fertility. Altogether, the Southeast's major agricultural activities provide the livelihood for nine million people. Once, periodic floods of the Tennessee River and its tributaries ravaged the countryside. Now, they are controlled by a great system of dams, which also supply electric power, essential to the industrial and urban growth. Much of the Southeast's industry is based on its own agricultural products and natural resources. Textile mills, the biggest industry, attract one-fourth of the region's industrial workers. Here, cotton from southern soil is woven into cloth used throughout the nation. Although textile manufacture was once a New England monopoly, today the Southeast's cotton spindles greatly outnumber those of the Northeast. Cotton seed has become a valuable industrial byproduct, yielding vegetable oils and one-third of the nation's protein meal feeds. The region's tobacco crops supply its factories, which turn out the world's largest number of tobacco products. More and more foods grown during the long season are processed locally before being shipped to northern markets. The forests are still a rich resource in the southeast. From these forests come logs to be converted into furniture, lumber, and paper products. Into the steel mills of Birmingham flow southern coal and iron from nearby sources to feed the furnaces. Here, deep in the south, is the source of roughly 10% of the nation's annual output of iron and steel. Aluminum ware is among the newest southeastern products. And Arkansas's mines supply about 90% of the nation's bauxite, our biggest domestic source of aluminum. The Southeast provides a growing market for the goods of other regions. As a producer, the Southeast sends out cotton, both in unpressed bales and in the form of finished textiles. Cigarettes, cigars, and pipe mixtures. Vegetables raised on its truck farms. Fruit from its upland orchards and subtropical citrus fruit farms. Lumber, furniture, and aluminum. Into the southeast flow goods from the other regions. From the northeast, machine tools, small manufactures, shoes, steel, locomotives, and investment capital. From the middle states, automobiles, farm machinery, and wheat products. From the northwest, metals, wool, and wheat. From the far west, motion picture films, seafood, certain fruits and vegetables. From southwest, cattle, and petroleum products. So in what it sends out, cotton, tobacco, fresh and processed fruits, and vegetables and forest products, and in what it receives in turn from other regions, the Southeast reflects an increased balance of its industry and agriculture. The pattern of rural and urban life has changed. And yet, sections of the southeast retain much of an essentially rural style of life. The farmhouse in the fields, the cabin on the hillside, the small country school or the newer consolidated school, the local country store and gas station, the church down the road, the courthouse square on a Saturday afternoon. In contrast with this pattern, an urban way of life has developed in the southeast. In cities like Birmingham, Richmond, and Atlanta, this fairly recent urban way of life is seen in the homes, in the schools, the churches, in the size of shopping districts and tourist facilities, in the industrial activity. The trend to the city continues. Already there are five cities of over 300,000 and 15 other cities with over 100,000 people. But the Southeast today is known for the region where new techniques and diversified farming have revitalized agriculture. Where industry, coming into its own, has harnessed the power of rivers to create new sources of revenue for the region. There are continuing problems, and yet there are new promises for all. 
The South has assured its future by providing education through public schools, colleges, and state universities. These benefits have reached the entire population, raising every standard in the region. The Southeast, 31 million Americans living and working in a region of long tradition, of achievement, and of great promise.